Greetings and welcome back to Created by Chaos. Now, a couple of things before we begin. First of all, if you can hear a odd humming in the background, it's because I have the heater on in this room. Um, it's about, I don't know, 8.30 at night. It's been a very, very cold day and the, and the night's getting quite cold as well. So if you hear the slight humming, I do apologise. Now, tonight I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, I watched a, a show called Black Magic Craft, and he was doing these things called Dungeons and Lasers, which is this, like, dungeon. It's made out of um, this stuff, which is like a plastic. Um, very, very durable, very strong. Fell in love with it. And I can do dungeon bashes to my heart's content once it's all painted up and so forth. This stuff is double-sided, so one side you get um, that, that, and there's all sorts. So in the in this one box, I've got a whole lot of stuff. You know, we're talking huge amounts. And there's like, you know, 60 of these or something, and there's like, you know, 30 of those and so forth. And it's enough to keep you going for quite some time. And I've got three boxes of this. And I have another five or six, hopefully, on their way. Arriving in about August. So I wanted to do them up. Now, like anything, I made a few swatches. So I, you know, I started off with a turquoise. Then I went to a dark blue. A light purple. Darker purple. And I remember right that's just a plain grey which is the problem. Plain grey is nice for most dungeons. You know, you can just grey with a bit of grey and some grey and a bit of white, bang, away you go. But that's kind of dull, really. And, you know, I, I thought you know, I could do something else. And I thought, well, hey, how about one side, I do something quite simple. And then the other side, if I want to, I can do something more detailed or the normal grey. And as you can tell, I've been experimenting. Now, the first thing I, I was going to do was, um, like Black Magic Craft, um, I've had this recipe for making rock from the 80s. This is um, from Tinker uh, Terrain, a very, very addictive program. Oh, a very addictive program. But basically, you can make your own dungeons, and then you can 3D print them and so forth. Uh, and you can see that that looks quite nice. And that's great, and it really is beautiful. But in a dungeon setting on a mass production, this is quite long to do, um, messy, and quite frankly, I, 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 I where's my little miniature? Um, oh, there he is, right in front of me. So you pop him in there, you know, he looks quite good. But, you know, if you've got a dungeon and so forth, I want something to stand out a little bit more. And like I said, it's double-sided. I can always do the other side later on. So I started with greys and greens and blues and then doing like, you know, having a, a wash of red and so forth. And, you know, this, that and the other. And as you can tell, I've ended up with this sort of colour. It's a bluey um, grey, I guess, with a nice green wash on it and a little bit of dirge up here and such. It's very, very simple to paint, very simple to do, and I'm just going to share with you how to do this. Now, you know, when you go up against your little dungeon, you want your miniature to stand out more than the background. Don't get me wrong, you want your background to look lovely. You know, I've got this brown with a bit of flock in there and so forth, and I'm going to more than likely do this with a little bits and pieces of maybe a lighter grey and so forth. And I've done other stuff as well. I mean, I've done like, you know, I've, I've done a tile here. That's brown. That's going to be for something else. So I've done one here like, you know, a bit of a, a you know, a uh, black sort of Necron style. Like there's something ominous happening underneath. So, you know, what are the players looking at? You know, could it be this? Could it be that? You know, and then I think maybe if I can find it amongst all the other bits and pieces. No, I can't. All right, well, I can't. But I've done other ones as well. Like, I've done one with, like, red... Oh, there it is right there. Like a, a red lava and so forth. So, you know, you can have a tile and my players can go... If I say, well, look, you know, you come into a room and it's quite warm, they can say, well, that's red underneath there. That's not going to be good. Or they go down a corridor and it's just like, you know, it looks out of place. So, you know, 
the rest of the place is looking like that, and then you come to a place like this, and you hear an unusual hum. Hopefully, hopefully, my players will go, oh, we better tread carefully here. But knowing my D&D party, more than likely not, they'll just go, oh, this is wandering anyway, and if we explode, well, we'll just make up new characters. Anyway, so I wanted to have something easy, quick to do, that looks okay. And like I said, other side, that's for another day. And I more than likely will do that in something a lot more detailed and more icky and so forth. But right now, um, I mean, it's like my D&D game. I run it every Friday. And I think this week is the last week before the Dungeon Bash. So I have to pretty much paint the, at least one box up perfectly. You know, so they can at least do the Dungeon Bashing now. Preferably, I'd like to have all of them done. But, you know, we'll see how we do. So, um, to begin with, uh, oh, before I forget, I'll be using some of these uh, brand new Citadel brushes. Now, you can tell this tip has been used a lot. Um, this is not my first video. I mean, my first video was, oh, we're going to do it the uh, this way, in the traditional, you know, brown and green with, you know, the, the hint of blue and so forth. And, you know, and no, this is what I love about this stuff. I am completely out of my league, and I had to rework the way I think dramatically, and I love that. No more of this, you know, oh, well, you know, I can just do what I normally do, and away we go. These brushes have, I've been using these for nine hours today. I bought, picked them up early this morning, and they are pretty impressive. Um, they're like a Timex, man. They take a lick and keep on ticking. And as you can tell, look at, look at the tip, you know, it's... It's like it's just brand spanking new. It's like I've just taken it out of the box just a moment ago. It's great. Beautiful form. The only downside I can see with these so far is if you're doing fine details, so if I had a, a fine tipped one, you need well, you need a little bit more paint on, in general with these things. But with a fine tip one, I think if you're doing, like, say, a fine detailed miniature, doing the, like, the phases and such, you might find you're going to need a little bit too much paint, and that might transfer over. I don't know. Um, like I said, I've been doing a lot of train of late, so I only wanted the big brushes, and they have been doing amazing for me. Okay, so we have our design here. So all right, we'll use this one. All right, so it's... No, no, what the hell, let's just use this side. So you look at it, and like most pieces of train, I try to think, well, I can do this and this, but to be honest with you, I'm a mad scientist. I go, hey, let's just try some purple. Let's see how we do. But you've got this bit up here, which is going to need a little bit more, uh, something to offset against this. All right. So down here, you can have whatever, but this is going to look a little bit different. Stand out a little bit. You don't have to. This side, you've got tiny little bits of brick in here and so forth and an archway. Now, now normally what I would do is I would like, you know, paint this, let's say, in like a, a lighter brown, if I was doing like a, a, a brownie sort of motif, and then, you know, do this, rocks, maybe have some blood trickling down or something, and that's good for a later date, not a problem, but today, no. So, what do we begin with? We begin with this, good old cold bloat um, hue, and <laughs> this, this blue is um, interesting. Um, normally when I use a uh, paint and a little tub or so forth, you just wipe it out, not a problem. This stuff, oh no, um, that's like after 15 attempts. It's very, very interesting stuff. Now we only need a small amount, but I believe that this bottle might be um, demonically possessed or have a genie into it, which is blue, which is understandable, because I ask for a small amount and I usually get an obscene amount. Gently squeeze. Gently squeeze, there we go. Oh, oh, ah. <laughs> all right. We got a decent amount. Right, so all we're doing is giving this a hefty paint. Now, as you can tell, I paint with my hand here. And what we're doing is we're just giving it a decent whack of this blue. Now, the wonderful thing is why I have the heaters on, everything should be drying pretty quickly. 
If this was summer, this would dry within seconds. I'd have no problems whatsoever. And I wouldn't be here in a pair of Ugg boots and, you know, and tracky pants on with a heater. Australia is known for having wonderful summers. And we, uh, we love our summers, but we don't really handle the cold very well. Now, one important thing I will mention is make sure you flip it over and do across the top here. Okay, I'm very, very naughty sometimes with my hand up there. I don't paint as well. And also make sure you get these little corners in as well. Okay. And the reason for that is when you um, put these things together, you know, you'll have that one there and you'll have that one there. And you put them together, you know, they've got to have that little uh, gap. And the reason for that is it's just a, a bit of a completionist, I guess I am. And also knowing my D&D players, they'll be like, oh, so why is that corner there not painted? That must be in there. Must be some hideous monster waiting for us. And we must make sure we stay here until it pops out or some nonsense. Yes, yes, I know it sounds silly, but my D&D players are a very special breed. All right. So what we have here is it with a fair amount of blue so it's looking pretty good all right all right I'll enjoy washing you out later on now those brushes um yeah so i've just popped it in some water giving a bit of a wash down amazing it's just so beautiful I'll leave it in there for a little bit longer and let some of the water come out of it. And in the meantime, we'll use the other brush I have. Ta-da! Another brush! Woo the only thing I don't like about these white brushes is they're white. And every little bit of dirt and speck and whatever gets on them. And I guess it makes them look a little, I don't know, tacky, I guess. If that's a nice thing to say. Okay, so after you, you've used that dark blue, you come across a bit of... Good old fashioned, I think it's a, yeah, sky blue. So, sky blue, um, we're going to do a dry brush on top. And once again, we're going to use a small, <laughs> small amount. There we go. Oh my goodness. Ah, must be something to do with the evening, the, the cycle of, of, of the evil uh, paint gods and something. Normally, like I said, I've done a lot of videos today. Normally, I have to go a gentle amount and bloosh, away we go. All right, so we want to get a reasonably healthy uh, blue on this. So, now you can go up and down, left and right. That's a personal choice. I believe in doing them both ways because both ways you get more coverage. Now, like I said, that that top bit is going to need something else, all right? So I am going a little bit more heavier with this top than normal, all right? So it's getting a little bit more of the light blue than anything else. Down here, don't get me wrong, this is still getting a, you know, a healthy whack, but yeah, that top is getting a little bit more than normal, okay? So now that's looking, you know, blue with some blue over the top of it. Right, now you can more than likely tell ones in the background, yes, uh, there's some copies that I've done, um, trying stuff out and so forth. Right, from that, now is the interesting bit. You can use this stuff, or well, any stuff really, but this is Glacier Grey. Um, now you notice I'm using pots, big, big pots, mostly because I think terrain purposes, you, you shouldn't really need a lot of like, you know, specialists like uh, citadels and so forth. They're phenomenal when it comes to miniatures, um, terrain, um, you know, you can buy some really interesting colors out there. Um, you know, look at this, this is called, um, a permanent lime green. This stuff is brighter than the old uh, 
Tesseract grain lids. This stuff here is a, a little bit more expensive, but you get tons more. And it's actually a lot better than this stuff. Don't get me wrong, I love this stuff, and it's very easy to use and so forth. This stuff you do have to mix with a little bit of water and so forth to get that consistency. This stuff, you know, as long as you shake it up, away you go. So, anyway, this, this grey. The Glacier Grey is a nice little grey. I've used it many times before, and I've never had a problem with it. There's also its counterpart, which is this, which is... Um, granite grey now, you know, if you were doing normal dungeons, you'd do this and this and maybe a bit of white, you know, and you get a, you get a nice effect, don't get me wrong, there is nothing wrong with it, it's just me being me, I guess, I want to think outside the box, I want to, you know, experiment, you know, I am my own worst enemy, I am a mad scientist, now, you can see other colours on there, those things are long gone and dry, so... I have no problems about them whatsoever. Make sure you're using a dry brush. Don't use um, a wet one or a moist one, which is why I'm not using the white ones at the moment. All right. So what I want you to do is just dab it on there. And once again, now you're going as almost as heavy as you did with the light blue, but not quite. So you want to get it nice and even. And you want to go a little bit, like I said, top heavy up around here. Okay. So the effect we're looking for is I want to have, um, I guess, this to look like a, a bit like old um, plaster, I guess, or something. And then we just gently do these bricks. Now, that said, with this, you can ex change it around. Maybe take out the blues, put in, you know, the turquoise, or you know, move into the the pinks or something. I don't know. Um, you know, experiment. That's what we're here for. And this is what I like about it. Um, like I said, one side will be this, all the way across, and then the other side, I don't know. Um, see, half of me says, oh, well, let's just go with the traditional grey. It's easy, it's, it's fun, it's, you know, and I'm thinking, yeah, it's, it's easy. I, I don't want easy. I want my mind to be challenged and while the um, uh, black magic craft is beautiful and I love it I think in my heart of hearts as much as I like it it would drive me shit bonkers it really would doing that uh, and I'm a completionist so I'm the sort of guy that will you know I can't just casually do a couple of plates and then walk away. I've got to do as much as I can in a day. I mean, I've got to really push myself. You know, the, the phone goes on silent and away I go. All right. Now, if you want to, you can just, you know, give the bit of a top a bit of a thing down. You know, it's not a major concern. It's going to be sitting down. It's fine. So there we have it. So now we're at the stage where we start to get a bit funny with the washers. Now, if you've watched my previous videos, you would know about washers. Um, I've made up some washers. I've been using this recipe, um, 1983, 84, I think it was, I started using it. Um, I had the, the best luck to meet up with uh, an artist, a local artist, who was a very nice guy. I, I would describe him as a hippie. Um, and disturbingly, the guy is still around. I don't know how. The amount he you know, drinks and, and, and smokes, but he, he is a traditional artist from you know the, the 60s, and he taught me a lot of what I am, you know, know today. And don't get me wrong, this was long before the internet. This was the 80s, you know, so it was you learnt by going and talking to other people and so forth. And I met him, I think it was at a, a, a Dungeons and Dragons gaming something or other. He wasn't gaming; he was there to. Uh, a painted wall or something, a mural, and I started chatting with him, and away we went. So, anyway, the washes. I digress, as I normally do. So, the washes I made up were black, uh, and a reddy brown, and a green, and a neutral, which is this. A neutral and black is what we're going to be using today. Now, for those that don't know, neutral, basically, all that means is the fact of um, 
I can mix this with purple, green, brown, orange, whatever I want to, and it, it's what, it turns into a wash. That's all it does. So you, you can use water if you want to. This is just a little bit more advanced. It's got a few things in it to help it out. The downside to it is you've got to give it a darn good shaking. Okay? Now, I'm not going to use these just yet, but I will be soon, so I'm just, you know, getting them ready now. Now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to add some slime. Now, I'm going to use that wonderful green I was talking about. So, what we do is, we are going to find a tub here. Ah, this one's had some green in it already, so, well, there we go. Not that it matters much, really. I mean, honestly, come on, let's come. There we go. With a lot of these things, once it dries, the chances of it mixing with the paint. So if I'm doing like a white and I'm using black, all right, then yeah, they're the complete opposites. That might that might actually happen. But you know, a bit of green, a bit of blue. If it's dry, the chances of it mixing in by the time it's you're done, it's very similar. It's much like these brushes. You know, these brushes have got a blue tinge to them. I've put them in this brand new tub of water, and they'll they'll sit there for like five ten minutes. And, you know, they'll come out, they might be a bit blue, but it's not going to matter. All right, so what we do is we use our good old pipettes, and we will suck up some water, and we will mix it. That should be enough, maybe, oh, maybe be a bit more, a little bit more. There we go. Now, when it, any, any of these things, I eyeball it. Um, how much do I need? Well, there's... If, I, if I've got too much green water in there, the, the green paint will tell me. And if I don't have enough, you know. So it's just, you just get the habit of knowing these things. And you'll just run it up the side here and so forth and go, well, that's, that's pretty much perfect to what I need. Or a bit more, a little bit less, who knows. And I think, yeah, it needs a little bit more water. Because the effect you want is you want it, to to look like slime, but you want to be able to see past it. You want to see past that slime and see the still see the rock underneath. There we go. Okay, we're at slime perfection. Now, like all washes, I always make sure. What do you mean? I have a couple of tissues to dab it off as we go. So there's a fan going off there. All right, so I'm putting some slime on. For me, I'm just going to whack a bit down the bottom there. Not a huge amount. And you can raise it, you can lower it, you can, you can do whatever you want. I mean, realistically speaking, it's slime, you know. It's it's the goo that's you know been congealing over the centuries. Okay, okay. Now, I've been naughty, and you can see the fact that the paint's come off there at the bottom. So what I'm going to do, instead of ruining that, I'm going to let that dry. I'm just going to use one of these. It's exactly the same thing. And there we go. There's a bit of a malfunction for you. And I will now go off and find a brush. Hey, found a brush. So my slime has been a bit contaminated. I think a bit of water got out, so I'm going to have to add... A little bit more green. Actually, tell you what. Well, no, 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 no we'll, add, we'll add the green. All right, I was going to use the test right there for the moment, but I'd have to spend five minutes shaking it, and I ain't going to be doing that. You know, I want to get this done, and I want to move on, and then go off and paint a whole lot of these. All right. So once again, we mix it all up. I think my problem was last time that. A, I rushed it, and B, it was too watery. I think that was the problem. I had overcompensated with the goo. All right, so it's exactly the same thing, and we apply the green. All right, so we just whack it on there. I mean, if you want to do a little smidge up there or something, that's fine. And this is a good learning curve for me. I, I'm still learning how to do videos and so forth on YouTube. So for me, it's always good to learn. It's, you know, here's something that I prepared earlier and I should do that. I mean, 
that's a bit unprofessional of me, and I do apologise for that. All right, so there we go. We've got a green. Now that in itself is quite nice. It's, it looks good. Um, when you pop it down next to your base there, it will contrast the brown against the green. It looks quite nice. You know, the, the miniature will stand out and they go, oh, well, you know, that's very pretty and so forth. Now, if I was to maybe put one of these large plays in red or something, or, you know, blotch it out with a hole the hole out and put a little eyeball in there or something that's a, to freak somebody out. No one is really going to notice about that from quite high up, realistically speaking. So, you know, it is quite good to, you know, have as much detail as you can, but not go over the top. Now, I've gone all over the top with the, the flock here. Um, some people have said I've gone over the top. I don't think I have. I mean, it's a tiny tiny little bit of flock, you know, you're not going to really see. And they're going, oh, but about, you know, storing and so forth. I mean, can you really see much difference, honestly? Even this one, which is a sticking out piece of bud, it's not that bad. You know, still, I mean, when you whack these things up against each other, you know, is there any difference? Not really, I, I can't feel anything at all. Still packs away perfectly fine. And the little nice effects like that, like the fuzzy grass and so forth, make the world of difference. Okay? All right. So, um, yeah, so I've used up a lot of cream for a small amount. This is why um, I like doing things in mass quantity. So I will, instead of like doing a little tub of green, I'll make a big tub of green and then I'll just you know, green them all out as I go. All right. So that's going to go over there for the moment. And. I will clean this brush. Now, I ask nicely if somebody out there, as many of you as you would like, please uh, like and subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'm, you know, pretty open. Um, and if it's, you know, something very important and so forth, I will reply to you. Um, now... We are now at a good stage, and that's quite nice, but we can do a little better. All right, so as I said, we have the basics, black and so forth. Now, these are not black paints. These are inks, ladies and gentlemen, acrylic inks. Do not, under any circumstances, use normal paints. I guess you could if you really wanted to, but this stuff works better. Far better. So I've got a, a very nice brown here, beautiful brown. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this brown with this. Now, like I said, if I had a um, the green wash or a, a red wash or whatever, if, as long as it's an acrylic ink, I can use it with this. Now, that said, yes, you can use a paint, I guess, but it's, it tends to be a little gritty, uh, and that transfers onto the model, uh, model or the terrain itself. So, look, it's personal choice. Um... So what I'll do is I've got, um, all right, so I'll use this one here. Now you don't need a lot. I mean, I'm only going to do one here at the moment. So like I said, you give it a, oh shit, foaming already. You give it a really good shake. And then when you open it up, use a small amount. You know, you don't have to use a huge amount. So we're going to use that. That's it. All right, and that is more than likely 10 times more than I'm going to need, but you never know. I'd rather be a little bit over the top than a little bit less of the top. All right, and we have our ink. Um, now, you can see the bottom here. After a while, it starts to congeal down there, so give it a good shake. Now, I'm not going to get all of it out, um, but I don't need to. Most of it's, I mean, I shake my models up. Now I've got a box over there, I don't know if you can, no you can't see it, so I've got a box that sits over there and it's full of miniatures and then every couple of days I will flip it over, a couple of days, flip it back and flip it over. So all the models, the little Citadel paints, so they just don't sit in one spot, they are getting, you know, done. I do have a shaker on order but instead of buying something cheap and nasty from China, I've actually gone off to a professional, paid the correct amount and having one shipped. 
and, I, and I'm like that. I don't want to buy cheap and nasty. Um, I'd rather have you know, a, a, an item that is comes with a warranty and a trained professional has made. So, you know, I, I'm getting quality. I always believe in helping out those who are doing the right thing. Um, okay, so, I'm going to squirt one full one of these into here. Come on, there we go. Let me give it a quick little mix around. Let me get this wonderful brownie paint. Now, some people go, well, why not just use black and then just, you know, do it that way. Yes, you can. Brown is just a little bit lighter. Um, if the brown doesn't work particularly well, I can always just go back and then use the black, you know. But, hey, we're with brown at the moment, so let's go with brown. And what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, go over these bits here. Okay, now, why are we doing these bits here to begin with? And I'm naughty and I don't have my tissues do I all right dab it down because I, like I said I want that to have a look to it I want that to have like almost like a like a dirgy sort of like you know it's it's rotting so it's like stuff is pouring down on it so you know you get that sort of like you know sludge has come down and all it is is just holding the brush there and just bringing it down a little bit that's all it is and you get a wonderful effect Beautiful effect of, you know, ickiness. Nurgle would be happy, I guess. And then with the brush, I've just taken a little bit off there. You give the rest of it a little light coating. Okay, so nothing too heavy. You just want to bring it across lightly. And what it... Oops, I've done that badly, haven't I? Oh, that, that was really nice, too. There we go. Now, what it does is the brown on the blue and the green has a wonderful, I don't know, mottled effect, I guess is a nice way of describing it. And it looks quite filthy and dirty. Now, you can see up here in the corner here, I've missed it. So that what it was before the, the grey was put over it, and now we have, you know, this. Now what you can do is, and I don't know if the picture can really be seen here, but you've got some gaps here where it's still quite green. What you can do is you can just, you know, dab into those little gaps, you know. And then just gently take it off if you want to. I mean, if you really want to be pedantic, you can then you know, wait for this to dry completely and then give it a black wash if you wanted to. But that's it. It's done. And it looks great. You know, and, and that's the look I want for my dungeon. I want it to look like, you know, it's old, it's rotting, it's, it's decrepit. So when they're wandering around, they can go, well, you know, <clears throat> we're in a dungeon. Now, this isn't like a rock dungeon because obviously you have grills here. So it's obviously, and it's bricks, so it's man-made. So it's not a traditional like rocky dungeon. So, you know, this could have been like a, a sewer for a wizard at one stage and it's now gone to pot. Um, you know, you can just let your mind go free. Now, this is... A very very basic. It's called a core set. Uh, Dungeons and lasers, lasers have a disturbingly wonderful amount of stuff. And I will, when my pledge level, because it was on a Kickstarter, um, comes active in a couple of days or a week or so, I'll be buying more. They have everything: I mean, the city streets, um, lamps, uh, multi levels. They've even got a sewer system that will have LED lights underneath it and so forth. Phenomenal stuff. So that's it from me. Uh, I will do a separate video on these. While I love this, I think I can still improve upon it. And then later on, I'll do another video where I do, you know, the flip side and what I do with that. And like I said, part of me wants to go and do, you know, the, the whole 
gritty, dirty, rocky look. And then part of me is like, mm, yeah, uh, I'd rather do something you know, a little bit more you know, easy, but still looks nice. I'll see how I do. So if you have any questions, just ask. Uh, this is Created by Chaos signing off. You have a lovely day. And if you're in Australia, stay warm. And if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you lucky buggers, it's summer. Enjoy it while you can. Chaos out.